Okay, we've made our way into the water and y'all look at how glassed off it is. From a northeast wind blowing 25 yesterday and storms to a beautiful morning like this. Zero wind, if anything, blowing three or four. Tons of bait out here. See stuff flicking everywhere. We've seen a couple blow ups. So we're gonna get out here a little bit deeper and start fishing. And then ultimately our goal is there's a reef over here that we're gonna make our way to, except it's completely underwater right now because we do have a little bit higher tides than normal. But hopefully we'll be able to find it. I think I, I know where it is. So as long as we can get out to it, it's not too deep, then we'll be able to fish it. And hopefully there's some fish on it. With all this bait out here, I don't see there not being any fish. But I've been wrong before. Let's go ahead and make our way out here and see what we can hook into. So we're gonna rig up our first croaker here, but I wanted to show you all the rig. So right here, I just have a chatter weight going down to about 12 to 18 inches of 20 pound fluorocarbon leader, as you can see, and a little live bait hook, commonly known as a croaker hook down here, because this is what most people use. So we're just gonna grab ourselves a croaker. If you want a super lively one, the livelier the better. There we go. Nice croaker right here. And we're just gonna hook them to the back right about there. Boom. And y'all look, that's what you want him to do. That's a good lively croaker. He's gonna sit down there. You can hear the weight. He's gonna make that weight chatter and hopefully attract a big old trout. So let's cast him out. We're not near the reef yet. We're just kind of fishing a flat. But we're gonna see if there's any trout in here because of all the bait. So cast him out, and then we're gonna open our bail and we're gonna let him swim with it. If your croaker's not pulling that line, then that's not a good lively croaker. Now I do have a pretty big chatter weight on here, bigger than what I would normally use. So it's a little harder for those smaller croaker to pull it, but they should be able to inch it along. Caleb's right here and he's throwing a popping cork. As you can see, there's no tide, no wind, nothing. So there's no current moving, no bait drifting, but I think we have an outgoing tide as the morning goes on. Hopefully I'll get the fish biting. Right now we're just kind of hoping for that sunrise bite. We've made our way up onto this shell, up onto this reef out here. It was kind of hard to find in the high tide, but we did in fact find it. And now we're about shin deep, ankle deep. And we're just gonna walk down it. We can go all the way down to the end and there's a bunch of scattered shell out there, which is usually pretty good. Or we can fish off either side. But since we're fishing live bait, I'm just gonna go ahead and probably make my way pretty far down. If I was working a lure, I'd sit here and constantly cast as I was walking, but we're not doing any of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and work my way pretty far down. Maybe fish on this side a little, fish on that side walk a little more and just keep doing that until we find some fish and hopefully end up at the very end where I know there'll be some speckled trout. Okay, Caleb's hooked up first, didn't take long. I think it's gonna be a nice trout right here. The way it's fighting. Is it a nice trout? It's a catfish. No, it's a red. A red or a drum. Nice little redfish right here, a little undersized. But that's the first fish of the day. He got the skunk off. Now it's time to start catching them. That's what we like to see right there, though. He caught that on a shrimp on a popping cork. We saw a lot of bait here, so we stopped to fish it. Uh, tons of finger mullet running over this reef. Cast the croaker out on this side. He put his popping cork on that side because it's kind of a drop off, and he got bit pretty much immediately. But this side's more of a gradual slope, the right side, and this left side is more of a straight drop. And this is usually where you catch a lot of your fish. Right here. Oh, he came off. Let's see if he'll come back for it. Had one starting to pull line out the reel. Let's see, there goes my line again. Let's see if he's back on it. Yeah, he's on it. There the line goes. But it's not ripping too hard and I didn't feel a bite. Kind of feels like my Kroger's just really swimming. Got him. No, he came off right there. Drop it back, see if he'll eat it. Okay, y'all, so my last Kroger died, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna grab one more Kroger out of the bucket. But I only got one dozen today, and I think I've already used four or five. So we're gonna grab one more, and then see what happens. If we don't catch anything on this, I'm gonna switch over to a lure because I wanna save my Kroger until I get down to the end where I know that there's probably some more trout in that area. So, we'll hook up one more croaker right here. I'll show you how I'm hooking them one more time. Taking them, run it through the back. Bam, just like that. And that's what you want them to do. You want them to go crazy like that. Let's see if we can catch something on them. 
If the croaker's not lively, he's not gonna get bit. Croaker are really only good for one or two casts. After that, they kind of start to die and a fish does not want to eat a half dead bait. Current's starting to pick up, tide's starting to fall out. You can see it coming up and over and hopefully that'll get those fish biting, like I said earlier. Okay, so I just put on this lure right here. This is just a down south chicken on the sea or chicken on the chain or whatever it is with a one eighth ounce jig head because there's no wind and it's pretty shallow up here. That should be plenty. And generally you want to use the lightest lure you can or the lightest jig head you can for the conditions. It gives it more time to get in front of that fish and gives it more time to eat it. Keeps it in the strike zone for longer. But all we're doing is casting it out and just pop, pop, let it sink. Pop, pop, let it sink. And hopefully we'll be able to hook into one of these fish. I know there's some out here. There's so much bait going over this reef. So we're targeting this side, like I said, where it's kind of a drop off because all the bait's coming from that way, pushing this way. So I'm thinking the fish are waiting there, waiting for that bait to spill over. Hopefully this looks just like a bait fish. On on the lure, y'all. Hit it right when it landed. I thought I had a tangle or something, but it was just a trout. Not a keeper, but hey. Good first fish of the day for me. Beautiful watching him fight in this clean water. Probably about a 13, 14 inch trout. Can't complain. Now I have officially gotten my skunk off, so that's good. Grab this guy, pop the hook out real quick and boom, we'll get him released. Perfect. Let's try to catch a bigger one. Okay, y'all check this out, y'all. Here's a little stingray right here. And that is the exact reason you shuffle your feet. A lot of time when people are walking on shell, they don't shovel because they don't think the stingrays will be up there. But that's not true at all. They like mud, they like shell, they like everything. So always shuffle your feet. And just to show y'all how glassed off the bay is, there's a dude water skiing right there. <laughs> just went right past us. If that doesn't tell you it's calm, I don't know what does. We're making our way down to the end though. We're about halfway there. Just slowly fishing our way down there. And uh, yeah, hopefully when we get down there, we'll get some fish to start biting. Here comes the water skier again. Feels like a nice trout right here. Undersized, but hey, still a good catch. Caught him right on top of this reef. Let's go ahead and unhook him and get a release. There we go, second fish of the day, y'all. Okay, y'all, we finally made it out here to the very end. We're in waist deep water now. I'm gonna hook myself up another croaker because it's time to party. Nice little croaker right here. It's perfect size for a big old speckled trout. Do the same thing we were doing earlier, hooking them by the tail. I did switch over to a smaller chatterweight because I was finding that they couldn't really pull that other one. And when I fish croaker, I like them to be able to rip line off that reel and really get swimming with it. So we're gonna take them, send them out on the edge of this reef. And then what we do is I like to get tight on them and then open up my bail and let them slowly pull line off of the reel just like that. If they're not pulling line, then to me, that's not a good croaker. And when you get a bite, it's gonna start ripping line real quick. Close the bail, set the hook, boom, fish on. So we'll let this guy swim out here. As you can see, that's a good croaker. The line hasn't stopped. Let's see. Got him. Finally hooked up on the croaker. Nice fish right here, whatever it is. Not exactly sure. Could be a real nice trout. Feels good. It hasn't came up to the top yet like a trout normally does, so I don't know. Could be a redfish, could be a, our best friend, the gaff top, but whatever it is, it's a fish and it's fighting. And that's what matters. It's been pretty slow out here, I'm not gonna lie. I just wanna see what it is. He hit it like a nice trout, but. Head shakes, don't be a. It's a catfish, it's a gaff top. So that's good, that's what we want to catch out here on these croakers. That's why we pay a dollar a piece. Cause there's really nothing that just fights like a good old gaff top. Look at that. Mmm, how fun. But nevertheless, it is something to pull the other end of the line. It is something to bend the rod a little bit and that's what matters. Came out here, caught a fish. Hopefully we can throw another croaker and catch something better than this. Still a fun fight though. Can't deny it, they do fight really hard. Especially on a trout rod, but. We'll get this guy unhooked and then put on another bait. 
Well, we've been at the end of the reef for probably about an hour and a half. Only caught that one gaff top. Had maybe one or two more bites on the croaker, but missed them. So we're gonna head back now while it's still early. It's probably only about 9, 9.30 in the morning. So we're gonna head back. We're gonna try to get a couple more finger mullet. And then we're gonna hop in the truck, drive to a new spot and see if we can catch some flounder. So we'll see y'all at the next spot. Okay, y'all, so we just pulled up to our next spot. It's about 10.30 in the morning right now, and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna be using to go out here and try to target these flounder. So pretty much we're just fishing around some pilings, around a little bit of structure out here. It's just a big old sand flat with a couple little guts, maybe about two, anywhere from about two to four feet deep. And we're just gonna be throwing mullet on a jig head. So we just have a one fourth ounce jig head, some 20 pound fluorocarbon leader, and that's it. And when we get out there, I'll show you how we're gonna hook up these mullet, because they are live mullet. We did, in fact, just cast net a few, but we're basically just gonna be taking them hooking them through the lips right here on the jig head, and then we're gonna be casting out next to these pilings or next to any structure that's out there and slowly dragging it by and hoping that these flounder come up and eat those mullet. And let's head out there and see. Right here where we're gonna be fishing, these are great structure for flounder. Flounder love structure more than any other fish. They're ambush predators. They sit around the structure, they wait for bait to come by, they hide down there and wait, and then they jump up and grab it. So we to grab ourselves one of these mullets. Nice little lively finger mullet here. We're just going to take them and we're going to hook them through the top and bottom lip. And the reason I'm doing that is because it doesn't really matter if they die. We're going to be dragging these things as if they're lures. So you can, I guess, you can hook it through both or you can take it and hook it just through the top. Either way, I go a little bit farther in than the lips. I hook it through the head like that. That's going to make sure it doesn't come off. He's still playing lively. Like I said, it doesn't matter if they're alive or not, as the flounder really don't seem to care that much. And then we just flip it up next to the pilings. And we're going to slowly drag it back. And that's what we're doing. We're just hoping that these flounder are sitting right up next to them, waiting for a little bait fish to come by them. And we're just waiting to feel that thump. And once we get away from the pilings a few feet, reel up and try again. It's kind of like we're pitching for bass. That's all we're going to be doing. I think it's a flounder, but it could be. It bit it. It's a red. Decent red, too. Don't think he's a keeper, but he bit it right at my feet. Not a keeper. But there we go. Nice little redfish. I actually just had my first flounder bite. As you can see, we're a little bit deeper. We're about waist deep now. We were fishing shallower than this. Finally made it out and it kind of started to slowly get deeper. And uh, yeah, right where it got deeper, I had my first flounder bite on these pilings right back here. And there we go. This might be a bigger red than I think. I'm not sure. That could be close to a 20 inch. If he is, he's going to go on the stringer. It's going to be real close, but there we go. He's fighting hard. That's the only reason I think he's a good one. Ah, he's gonna be a little short. But there we go. Nice little redfish right there. Gonna get a measurement on him. And he is pointing the tail, about 18. Look at there, nice beautiful tail, blue tail on him. It's a good fish. Let's unhook him. Keep trying to find a fish. But yeah, I got thumped by a flounder. He missed it. I casted it back out. He hit it again, thumped it, took the bait. Beautiful red right there. Nice spot, nice blue tail. Let's get a release on him. They're definitely out here in this deeper water. Okay, Caleb just caught himself a nice trout on a dead mullet. And I, oh, what is that? Dude, was that a big old trout? I don't know. Hey, I might need you to double net this guy. I think this might be a huge trout, dude. I feel head shakes. Oh, stay on, dude. It just came up and splashed like crazy. Yo, we got ourselves a big old trout right here. Big old trout. Bro, net that thing. I'm about to take mine out. Hold on, hold on. We're good. We're good. All right, here you go. Net him. Where is it? Net him. That's a big trout, baby. I got yours and you got mine. Oh my gosh, dude. What a way to end the day. That's one of my biggest trout ever. That'd be my oh, new- Don't put my little trout in there. That might be my new PB, y'all. show me, show me, I'll get it. On there? Oh, oh, yours is out. Get him in. <laughs> Let's go, dude. What a way to end on a, we're throwing dead mullet. I can't get a gun. Oh. He's like 23. He's not even that huge. He's only like 23, but it's so fat. Big old breeding female. Massive. Let's go. Can't ask for much more than that. That's crazy. 
big old thing. Wish we could get a complete accurate measurement on it, but it seems it's about 23, 24. We'll hold it up. That's my, can't get it on there, but yeah. Wait, no, wait, dude, no, I'm tripping. That's 25. The silver is 25. He's almost to the other red. Hold on. Oh, he's 25. That's a 25 inch trout. On the tail right there, you can come up on it and look right there Hold to on. the bottom of the lip, to that silver. That's 20. Yeah. That's 25 inches right there. There we go. That is my biggest trout of the year. There's nothing wrong with that. So we're gonna go ahead and get a release on and try to get a picture real quick, but hey. Beautiful fish on a dead mullet on a jig head. Never sleep on mullet on a jig head. That's One this big, we don't want to keep, and it's right at 25, so I really shouldn't keep it anyways. But just home by the tail for a while. She's tired after that fight. We've taken some pictures, so we just gotta do our job and get a good release. When she starts kicking, she's ready to go. And that was a healthy kick. She's gone to live another day. Let's go ahead and get another bait cast back out there and see if we can hook into some more because I definitely think there's a school out here as we caught those two at the same exact time. Let's keep on fishing. Well, y'all. That's gonna be it for the video. We're about to head on home. We had a pretty decent morning of fishing, nothing crazy. Only brought home one fish. Caleb caught that uh, 17, almost 18 inch keeper trout. But I did catch my biggest trout of the year, as y'all saw, and the GoPro died right as we were unhooking it. But hopefully we got some clips on the other camera. And you can see that nice 25 inch trout and that thing was crazy fat too, so that's awesome. Other than that, we started the morning off with Caleb catching redfish and I caught two small speckled trout. So like I said, not the best day ever, but it was also not the worst day. We did catch some fish. We had something to tug on the other end of the line, and that's what really matters. But I want to say thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you're not already. If you are, like always, guys, I thank you so very much. We're going to be out fishing a bunch of days this week. We have beautiful weather. If you have the chance to get out there and fish, the winds are supposed to be blowing under like seven or eight all week. So take advantage of that. It's still summertime. The fishing's still hot. It's still hot outside, which kind of sucks, but get out there early morning, late evening, take advantage of these light winds and these tide movements and catch yourself some fish. But until then, thank you guys for watching once again. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.